I, I spoke specifically of uh, Theo Van Gogh and Hirsi Ali's movie, Submission. And I pointed out that uh, in making that film, the filmmakers themselves said that they were trying to act on behalf of Muslim women uh, because uh, they are upset with the sexual oppression of Muslim women and they want to do something about it. And my response to it is that uh, for practicing Muslims, the Quran is the word of God and uh, blasphemy is probably never going to get most Muslims to listen to you if you uh, and blasphemy here consists of the fact that random lines from the Quran were scratched on the naked bodies of Muslim women uh, basically as a way to show that the scripture itself sanctions sexual abuse but it also suggests that uh, there is only one way to read the scripture which is the way that uh, the uh, patriarchal people read it and you know my own work as you know as well as the work of so many other Muslim women is to show that uh, like every other text in the world the Quran also is open to multiple readings and that we ought not to naturalize the connection or make it seem as if there's a natural connection between uh, the Quran and women's oppression. Uh, you're going to participate in the third conference of uh, Islamic feminism that you resist to be called a feminist. Quran is not a feminist text. But what I do argue is that the Quran provides a certain framework an epistemological, ontological framework within which we can theorize radical sexual equality, basically meaning um, if the Quran teaches that women and men are ontologically from the same self, same nafs, it, you know, it com completely changes the way in which Muslims in particular are used to thinking about women as having a secondary status, you know, that she was taken from the man's rib. There is no such narrative in the Quran. And more importantly for me, the fact that the Quran doesn't masculinize God, doesn't engender God, doesn't patriarchalize God. In other words, we are told that God is uncreated and hence unlike anything. So God is beyond sex and gender. I call it an anti-patriarchal view of God. And if God cannot be patriarchalized, then I feel like the Quran, which is God's speech, also should not be patriarchalized. For me, one of the more fascinating questions is, well, how have Muslims gotten so far away from the central basic teachings of the Quran that they are almost a caricature of what the Quran is trying to teach them? challenge uh, that colonialism made, I'm talking about intellectual colonialism, made is approaching the entire uh, uh, Muslim countries, whether uh, in India or in Indonesia or in the Middle East, everywhere, uh, from one perspective that those people are Muslims. The politics of colonialism was based on how to deal with Muslims and how to deal with Islam. For the Muslim accepted the identity uh, that they are Muslims, okay, with no other additional sub-identity like Indian, like um, you know Middle Eastern, like Arab. The identity uh, invested by the colonial power uh, approaching the Muslim world was taken for granted from Muslim, and it was in a way interiorized, okay. And this I call trap, trapping, okay? Because part of my identity is a Muslim, but it's not my entire identity. I have so other uh, identities uh, beside being a Muslim. The second entrapping is uh, accusing Islam of being backwardness, backward. So Muslim, uh, Muslim, uh, Muslim intellectuals, as I said, uh, responded in a very polemic way. Again, thanks to colonialism, that the Muslim became trapped uh, in this kind of trap. In the meantime, Europe presented itself as the most advanced, the most rationalist, the, you know, uh, the progressive, the scientific, that Muslims should learn from. 
but it was also presented itself as aggressive, uh, exploitive, uh, that Muslim has to fight. If you are talking, talking about, you know, uh, people who, who take in their hand uh, the power to do what they think uh, is uh, uh, obligatory duty for the believer to do, uh, you can find the similarity between uh, Muslim uh, fundamentalist group and Christian fundamentalist group and Jewish fundamentalist group. The basic problem with fundamentalism all over the world is even with fundament secular fundamentalism and enlightenment fundamentalism, is this kind of claim of truth with the capital T. The inability to see any legitimation in any other world view. Uh, this is the, the, the big, uh, the big uh, problem in, uh, in our modern time whether we speak about Islamism or speak about enlightenment or whatever it is. Truth, with capital T, is the most dangerous concept that allows people to kill each other.